So if you've been with us the last uh, few weeks, you know we've been talking about these great gifts that we have as a result of, of Jesus, uh, which is obviously what we celebrate during Christmas, is the birth of Jesus. We've talked about hope, we've talked about uh, love, we've talked about joy, and uh, today we're going to wrap the whole thing up and talk about peace. It, it, is, it is part of the, the Christian experience, peace. Uh, if you're a believer, you, you probably already can relate a little bit. You can think of times that God has given you peace. We're told in Galatians that one of the fruits of the Spirit, you got love, you got joy. And the third thing in the line is peace. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. That, that, that peace is a gift to us from, from, from God. From, it's a part of the Holy Spirit being in, in your, your life. Uh, it, it's a major theme in uh, the original song that the angels sang to the shepherds on the Christmas story. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When uh, I think of peace, I, I often will think of uh, one of those songs that, that I grew up with, and if you uh, maybe grew up in the church, you, you probably grew up with, with, it, with it too. It's a song that uh, Horatio Spafford wrote back in the 1800s, late 1800s. He was a businessman who lived in Chicago, and, and you might even be familiar with the story. He, he lost one child to pneumonia. Sometime later, he sent his four daughters and wife on a ship to Europe, and he was going to meet them later on. And while crossing the Atlantic, the ship sank, and all four of his children died. His wife somehow survived, and she sent back message uh, to Horatio saying that, that the you know, our daughters are gone, I'm here. And so he took the next ship available to go and meet with his wife. And when the ship got near the place where, where his four daughters lost their lives and the other ship had gone down, Horatio penned these words. And we sang a different version of it this morning, but, he, but, but these are the words he penned. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows row, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well it is well with, with my soul. Now, the words themselves are pretty powerful, but you put them in the context of what he was going through when he penned those words. His, his, his entire family wiped out but one way or another. All of his children uh, gone. All of his children dead. Uh, they, they give a hint of what the Bible talks about when it talks about peace. Um, th this was not just a musician trying to come up with a clever tune, you know, that, hey, maybe this will go over with the public, you know, I can make a few dollars. I mean, not, that's not bashing musicians, that's what they do for a living. But that wasn't his goal here. He wasn't just trying to write another song, trying to make, make some cash. Uh, he, he, was, he was pouring out his heart in the worst possible situation of a person's life. And, and, and in his words, he, he just reveals these deep, authentic peace that he has with Jesus being a part of, of his life. Now, <clears throat> that's not generally how we frame peace. Uh, we, don't, we don't generally think of, of a peace that way. We think of peace as maybe as an absence of pain, an, an absence of struggle, uh, an absence of, of some of those circumstances, hardship and so forth, a smooth sailing. I think of that often when it comes to peace. Uh, but as the old hymn so accurately portrays, peace is not the absence of, of trouble, what peace is, is the presence of God. And, and, and that's the important thing to remember when it comes to peace. It, it is the presence of God in that situation. So here we are, uh, the morning of, of Christmas Eve, and um, things may be going really well for you right now. You, you're thinking, hey, peace, yeah, that, that, that's, that's a cool concept, and that, that's, just, that, that's awesome, celebrate that. Uh, you may be surrounded with uh, struggle, you may be going through a time of pain or, or pain, a time of, of, of just upheaval in, in your life. If, if, if that's the case, then uh, I want to encourage you today to open your heart to the presence of God this morning and allow his peace to come to you uh, at, at this time. Uh, because that is where peace comes, the presence of God in the midst of of trouble. You think about it, the Christmas story itself took place, uh, it, it's, it's surrounded with turmoil, it's surrounded with trouble. It was a time of great political unrest in their uh, culture. Uh, they lived under a very oppressive government. There was religious confusion all over the place. Uh, we know that because as Jesus grew and, and started teaching, he, he was like correcting all kinds of crazy things out there. And there was world violence going on. And, and honestly, th that sounds a lot like the world we live in today. Some of those same things going on. But, but, but peace is available today just as it was back then. And so what I'm going to talk about today is three, three different things uh, about peace this morning. Uh, the first thing is that, that peace came in the midst of, of turmoil. 
Uh, I love uh, one, one of my favorite songs, Christmas songs, is, is Silent Night. You know, I kind of it's like uh, I feel like I don't feel like Christmas really has happened on this Silent Night. I've sung it at least once. Uh, usually, that's where uh, it, it's. I love going caroling. We go caroling every year, and uh, that, that's I, we usually sing it a couple, three times there. And we'll sing it sometime on a, on a Sunday. I think we got it on, on the schedule for tonight with the Christmas Eve service. So usually, that shows up at the Christmas Eve service. It just seems like that's like Christmas, right? That's just like that's just a Christmas, good old Christmas traditional song. But you know what? That's probably one of the most inaccurate songs <laughs> about what real Christmas was like at the birth of Christ. Uh, Mary gave birth in, in a stable where they keep animals, right? Uh, probably not a lot of peace there. Animals, well, it doesn't mention the cattle are lowing. Or, no, that, that's a different song. That's, anyway, I mean, you know, uh, it's probably a noisy, smelly, you know, you don't think of, oh, Christmas, you know, in, in, a, in a smelly old stable. The city of Bethlehem is overflowing with hordes of people. All the people are there for the census, and they're bringing their livestock with them, many of who uh, have arrived um, after walking several days in, in, in the dust and the dirt uh, by foot or going through the, the, the treacherous roads and, and, and just, 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 they're, they're it's just got to be a mess. I, I've been Ragbri a couple, three years, and, and I, I think of Ragbri. When, when you go into a town, you, you, there's thousands of people going into a small little town who, who really is not set up for these thousands of people. They're just not set up for, for all the plumbing use that's going on, and, and everybody's hot, and they're smelly, and they're stinky, and, they're, and, 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 and they need showers, and they need food, they need a place to stay, they're trying to set up camp, and, and there's these hordes of people coming in on this poor little town. While they, they, they love it, the business people love it, they're getting, they're getting a nice shot in the arm it's still a drain and it is difficult for that city to manage that that's kind of what's going on in bethlehem silent nights not really the picture of bethlehem at the birth of jesus is anything but quiet and is anything but peaceful uh, anything but but silent <coughs> excuse me you add in the other elements of the christmas story angels showing up to shepherds a visitor showing up unannounced to visit this new baby born in the stable <coughs> excuse me and in the midst of this uh, not-so-silent night, we, we read of angels bursting into song in Luke 2. Suddenly there was, a great, uh, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. So, silent. Sorry, they've, they've lost the, the slides, and, <laughs> and I erased them, so I'll... They're on one of the TVs out there. <laughs> I'll fix that between services. <laughs> not exactly silent, not exactly uh, peaceful that we're looking uh, out that that song talks about. <coughs> Excuse me. You, uh, you turn on the news today, and uh, I, I kind of like to watch the news. Uh, my wife usually walks out of the room when I'm watching TV. If I'm watching this, she doesn't want to hear it. You got you got political pundits yelling at one another. You got news of explosions and, and unrest and, and 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 government overthrows and and and, and, it, and it's it's crazy. You look at your calendar and there's bills that are due. Um, uh, there, 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 there's, there's struggles in life. Relationships can be challenging. Children can be taxing. Jobs can be stressful. And in the midst of our own not-so-silent nights, there is still peace available. And that's the beautiful message of the gospel out of the birth of Jesus, that peace is still available to us. Uh, now, the big question is, are we going to be able to have this video? Uh, the video is not there that really destroys what we're going to do next. Um, it is. There's, okay, listen to the words uh, of this song. Uh, here's a guy that's under stress, that's under a challenge, and, and toward the end you get the words of Jesus, peace be still, kind of coming through this. We just, I just want you to, pay, to, to listen to this, get the feel of this song. <coughs> I tried to be brave, but I hid in the dark I sat in that cave and I prayed for a spark To light up all the pain that remained in my heart And the rain kept falling Down on the roof of the church where I cried I could hear all the laughter and love And I tried to get up and get out but a part of me died and the rain kept falling down Well I'm scared if I 
open myself to be known I'll be seen and despised and be left all alone So I'm stuck in this tomb and you won't move the stone And the rain keeps falling Somewhere the sun is a light in the sky But I'm dying in North Carolina And I can't believe there's an end to this season of night And the rain keeps falling down Falling down Falling down For light, my children are there and they love me in spite of the shadow. I know that they see in my eyes, and the rain keeps falling. I'm so tired of this game, these songs of the road. I'm already ashamed of the line I just wrote, but it's true, and it feels like I can't sing a note. And the rain keeps. Falling down Falling down Falling down Put the seeds in the dirt And every day now we've been watching the earth For a sign that this death will give way to a birth And the rain keeps falling Down on the soil where the sorrow is laid And the secret of life is igniting the grave And I'm dying to live but I'm learning to wait In the rain an unusual song but uh, I, I love I love the his, his, his he's pouring his heart out he's, he's in turmoil and in the same point there's there's Jesus that he's hearing the voice like of Jesus obviously it's a woman's voice but it, but you know what I'm saying uh, just giving him peace peace be still it's, I'm here I'm here it's all right you know I, I don't I, I thought that was a, a fascinating uh, illustration of, of what we're talking about, peace in the midst of, of turmoil. Well, Jesus is also the Prince of Peace. This is this important picture part, part here. Uh, the prophet Isaiah tells us something very important about peace. It says, for to us, in, in Isaiah chapter 9, for to us a child is born, for to us a son is given, talking about Jesus coming, 
and the government shall be on his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So peace is not just a feeling. It's not just a, a state of mind. It, it, is, it is a person. It is Jesus. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is our peace. When we're in our relationship with him, we are in a relationship with peace. Because he is the Prince of Peace. And as we learn to trust him <clears throat> with the unpeaceful parts of our life, the things that are in turmoil, the things that are, that are causing us strife, when we learn to trust him with those unpeaceful parts of our lives, it begins to transform us from the inside. And, and peace is, is there. Peace, he is, he is with us. Think about this. In the midst of the turmoil of Mary uh, in the Christmas story, Mary is giving give birth to Jesus. She's an unwed mother, which could lead to the death penalty in, in, in their culture. She, she's in this relationship that, that she's going to get married, then she's not going to get married. Then she's going to get married, you know, this on again, off again thing with Joseph as he finds out the story that, no, this is really from God, this is a good thing, and he comes back. But there's some emotions coming and going with that whole thing. You got angels appearing and leaving throughout the story. Uh, even knowing what she knows, that, that Gabriel says, hey, this, this, you're going to give birth and it's going to be the son of God. And she knows, she knows in her heart of hearts how, how this whole thing happened. There had to be these moments of, of, of fear or, or uncertainty, feeling this baby move inside her, kicking and moving and, and, and preparing, growing inside, thinking, what is this? What is this? I mean, it, it, there's never been a child like this ever, and she's going to give birth to this child. So there had to be some unrest in her, her heart about, at times at least, about that whole thing. And then giving birth to her firstborn, that's always scary <laughs> the first time. And then shepherds visiting and announced, telling of angels. I, I mean, the whole story is filled with, with unrest and, and turmoil. In the midst of that, we're told in Luke chapter 2, verse 9, that, that Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. She just took note of it all. <coughs> the angels coming and going, all the story, she just treasured those in, in her heart. On, on the service, excuse me, surface, Mary's life had not become more peaceful. If anything, it's gotten crazier for her. But Mary was learning to trust in the one who was uh, in control this whole time. And it's, that's, that's the lesson for us. When we uh, surrender our control to the Prince of Peace, that's, that's when we begin to find peace in him as well. The chaos, the busyness, the noise of life may not change, but we experience peace because we know he's in control. We've surrendered these things over to him. So I don't need to get worked up. I don't need to get crazed. He, he's there. He's in control. He's got this. I don't know if this anything in your life, anywhere in your life where you need to start trusting in Jesus, then let me encourage you to allow the peace of Christ into your life by, by taking the psalm's uh, words to heart in Psalm 46.10, where he says, Be still and know that I am God. Even in the midst of turmoil, even, even in the midst of craziness, to just step back and say, Okay, be still and know that I am God. The last idea is Jesus offers peace for me. This is from Philippians 4. Uh, Do not be anxious about anything and everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, that your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It surpasses all knowledge. Sometimes, sometimes peace doesn't make sense. Sometimes it surpasses our understanding. And maybe that's the whole big grand paradox of, of, of prayer. We, we pray for God to change things. We pray for God to change our circumstances. We pray for God to change the people and the things around us. How many times have you prayed prayers like that? But more often what he tends to do is he actually changes our hearts and he actually changes our perspectives on things as we connect with him at a deeper level we begin to see things more like he does we begin to trust more confidently in his ability to handle things no matter what and his ability to settle um, issues of, of, of peace and by his goodness and his faithfulness and it's just this sense of, of confidence that he's, he's got this in his hands. He's, he's good. That grows with our relationship as we grow with him, and then peace grows in us. That sense of understanding, of calm and acceptance acts like a guard around our hearts and our minds. It's the peace that, that God promised when he left the earth. He, he told the disciples, peace I leave you in John 14. My peace I give you, not as the world gives, I do not give you. Let your hearts be 
excuse me, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Those are not just empty words. Uh, they're, they're, they're not said lightly. They were a promise of peace that would come to the disciples and to us when, when needed it most. He knew the disciples were going to suffer greatly in the years to come. He knew we would suffer in, in our lives. And he says, my peace I give you. I give you. So just know that whatever you're going through now or whatever you may go through in the future, that his peace is there for you until you breathe uh, your very last breath. Allow his peace to fill you. Let's pray together. <laughs>